NordVPN.com slash Fightful is great. How great? How about this? You're going to save money on it if you buy as many pay-per-views as I do. And I buy a lot, man. I'm not going to say what kind. That's for you to determine. But I got a great deal with NordVPN. Used it before they even worked with us. Got 70% off my deal. Got an additional month free, 30-day money-back guarantee. Works on all my devices. I have it on this computer. I have it on this phone. I have it on the router that's sitting right over there. The TV that's up against the wall. The laptop that's downstairs. It's on all those devices, and it works on all those. And I can do that and have online threat protection, avoiding pop-up ads, malware, all that stuff. Online trackers. But... You can change your virtual location with just one click with nordvpn.com slash Fightful. Subscribe to services overseas or get those pay-per-views at the international rate. Check it out, nordvpn.com slash Fightful. What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap, Fightful, here with a name you know. You might know him as, as Shane Thorne. You might know him as Slapjack, but we got Shane Haste here. How you doing, man? How's it- Good, man. Good. How you doing? I'm happy to be here. It's great. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yeah, you got you got New Japan in L.A. coming up August 21st. Mm-hmm. A big tag match yeah. there. And I mean, yes. well known for your tag team wrestling. How, how has it been in New Japan for you so far? Uh, it's been uh, amazing. The, the change of from where I was before to uh, the freedom and the, the style of competition in this is a lot it's just so freeing and it makes me happy. Like when I wrestle now, I just want to wrestle to have fun. And like the fun that I'm having in New Japan is can't be topped. So, I mean, what I, I get the feeling I'm going to know the answer to this because it's always Rocky <laughs> Romero, but how yeah. did you end up in New Japan after leaving WWE? Uh, yeah. Rocky, Rocky <laughs> was there. Uh, Jonah was there and they were doing, I've been living out in uh, SoCal way, for the last year or so and um new japan strong's been running out of here so i would just go to the shows to support jonah and meet the boys there i've known rocky for a long time so yeah and then i think just the career that myself and mikey had in japan before going to wwe definitely was a foot in the door as well now, did you have to face a lot of the issues that a lot of other wrestlers faced when they left WWE with like their visa issues and things like that? Or were you already pretty much firmly entrenched here? Yeah, I had a green card that um, when I was in WWE during the pandemic, they helped a lot of us uh, foreigners get our green cards and uh, lawyers and all that stuff. So that was a fairly simple process. And there was like a group of 10 of us doing it at the same time. So we had a lot of support with each other of checking the boxes of what we needed to do and uh, all that. So yeah, that was a fairly, I was very lucky. I was very lucky. Like when the uh, first budget cut started coming, I'm like, come on, I just gotta, just gotta get that green card. Just yeah. uh, gotta get that <laughs> green card. So yeah, I got lucky. Well, the pandemic was a really interesting time for you. Cause I remember when that first started, they were doing those PC <laughs> shows. A lot yep. of stuff was, was going around and, you and uh, now Duke Hudson popped up yep. on the main roster. Do you remember like what you were told about that or, or what plans were, were set for that? Because, I mean, you guys ended up getting a, a pretty, pretty prominent position on the show for a little while. Yeah, I think you know, like a lot of it was that a lot of the uh, main talent and things like that couldn't travel. So they had to use who was in Orlando. Um, and myself and Hudson weren't really doing anything set in stone on NXT. So that a lot of the people who weren't doing anything on NXT got used on main event. And then that's, you just get seen. You're in the right place at the right time. You get seen. And then they're like, all right, so we've seen that I'm able to work on main event. Let's bring them into Raw because they still need the people for that too. So it was very much uh, right place at the right time. And being an incredible wrestler. <laughs> I, I remember the booking was kind of weird because, like, you all weren't featured on NXT TV a lot as a team. But then it's like, no. oh, well, you all popped up on Raw and then you all appeared on, Sm- <laughs> on NXT once as a team. Yeah. Then they're yeah. like, no, 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 back to Raw. And by the way, you're going to yeah. beat Cedric and Ricochet who have been on, like, <laughs> featured as well. 
It was yeah. It was confusing at the time for a viewer that is used to a, a lot of parody there. Oh, definitely. Like, and I think it was just people they were just rolling with it, like because everyone was getting tested all the time too. So people would pop with COVID, and then you'd have to pull them off, and this and that. So they were very much making it up as they went along and just trying to put a product out there. Um, there were some times where I'd get a call in the morning saying, can you be here in a few hours to wrestle this person for main event? And it was like, yep, whatever. Like you just, like you get used to it, especially at the position I was in at NXT for the years before that of just being a fill in kind of guy. I was very used to it. And like, like I said, I'm a good wrestler to toot, toot my own horn. So it's, <laughs> it's not too hard. And at that point as well, um, I was just trying to do do me. So, like, I didn't have to put too much thought into, um, like, oh, what's this going to do for my character? What's this going to do for that? I'm like, oh, I don't have any storylines. I don't have a character they've told me anything to do with. So I'm just doing whatever I want to do. And, luckily, it was a heel at the time. So I'm like, well, I'm not winning, so who cares? <laughs> I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go out there and put on a good show. Were you surprised the one week when they're like, yeah, you all are going over Cedric and Ricochet, just like kind of out of the blue? <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, like, cool. Sounds <laughs> Why good. not, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it, man. Like, and we had fun working with those guys too. Like, it was a lot of back and forth and um, bouncing off ideas and trying to just do the best thing that we could at the time. We're all just trying to get noticed. How was it for you reuniting with Mikey and Jonah? earlier this year in new japan i mean that's that has to feel good it's familiar it's established as well because i mean that that's where a lot of your buzz had come from when you had uh, popped up in nxt was tmdk yeah man like and it was just it was exciting but it was like nerve-wracking too because the like i, I know a lot of the japanese fans see this and it been a long time like yeah. we were in i was like it'd been six five or six years since Mike and I had worked together and we hadn't had a chance to train together or anything <laughs> like to kind of, so the first time we we're like shooting off at that back elbow moonsault fist drop, I'm like, we'll see how this goes. Like I hadn't done a standing moonsault in years either. I'm like, so the, the expectations of uh, what we were in our twenties to where we are in our thirties now and five years or so of getting beaten down and <laughs> getting changed to get that, groove back i'm still now trying to get my groove back to what i was uh when i was in noah before and um it is, and it is hard like because i was in my 20s then and now i'm in my 30s and i'm like maybe i just don't actually have that energy anymore so like <laughs> maybe i like it's trying to find a balance of who i was to who i am now um and then not dying in the ring <laughs> One thing I've always wondered about you and Mikey, because because I'm fairly local to the Cincinnati area. I remember you guys worked mm -hmm. a couple matches for ROH back in yep. Cincinnati. It was the Rise and Prove yeah. tournament, and then you guys did a match against the Briscoes. I want to say the next month. Were there any, ever yeah. any advanced talks about you guys coming into Ring of Honor? Because it seemed like that went really well. Yeah, the only problem was that I didn't have a working visa, mm. um, and that was just at their point they weren't doing visas for people, so it was my fault. It was just me. They, I know that they, they, were, they loved us, that we had the right, uh, what they wanted. Um, it was just, yeah, unfortunately, the timing of, uh, yeah, couldn't get a green. They're like, yeah, man, if only, they're like, if only you had a working visa or a green card. I'm like, but we had Noah at the time too, so yeah. I wasn't too stressed about that. My main goal was working in Japan, and from there, we went from doing the three-month visas to the six-month visas, so we were living in japan six months on come home for two weeks renew our visas and then go back to japan so uh like like how are you feeling about new japan's approach to america to me it's it's can't miss tv it is it is what i expected nxt to be it is this great mix between established and young talent then occasionally mm -hmm. you'll see like john moxley just show up there yeah. like it's it's this fantastic mix of a little bit of everything and yep. a bunch of different styles. We've seen guys like Fred Rosser, who a lot of people yeah. thought they'd never see on TV again, and he is yep. better than he's ever been by Dude, far. That, 
that title match he had was like oh, yeah. we were there and I was I was watching from the bleachers and I was like, this is amazing. And every time like they they get to a falsy or something, I'm like, they're not gonna be able to top this. And each time <laughs> they kept topping it and the the emotion in the room and just like the fans too, like you, it doesn't I don't know if it translates as well on TV how uh, awesome the New Japan Strong fans are and how into it they are. Like they they're there's a huge group of diehard fans who know every little bit of the storylines. Like when he won the title, man, that room, everyone on their feet. It was amazing to see. He's an amazing storyteller. And I think, you yeah. know, a lot of people didn't get the opportunity to see that as Darren Young in WWE because of the role mm-hmm. he was slotted in. Yeah. And I remember, I think it was three years ago, we were in Chicago and I was like, are you going to keep wrestling? Because like we hadn't seen a lot of him on TV. And he's like, yeah, I am. And he's like, and I think I'll find the right place. New Japan Strong mm-hmm. has seemed like the right place for an awful lot of people to, yeah. to sort of find themselves and tell their stories. And they, mm-hmm. were, they were kind of forced into a brand split by the pandemic, but it, yeah. it's worked out fantastically. How has that been yeah. for you compared to, I mean, working in Japan in general? I, I mean, I, of course, you worked so much Noah, uh, but yeah. like, what are maybe some of the differences and similarities that you're, you're facing, even though, granted, those were two way different companies? In different companies, yeah. It's just it's the different people that you're working as well, and working a lot more. And it's like I said, the like what NXT could have been of just bringing you don't you never know who's going to be on the show. When I see yeah. the cards getting like uh, announced on Twitter and Instagram and that, I'm like, damn, that's cool. Like, I'm like, are they going to be with us now permanently? But it's yeah. like a lot of people coming and going, and when they're doing that, they're showing everything that they can show. Everyone's like getting the best out of everyone. Um, so getting to work with people and then these storylines and working on the same shows and just getting the, the locker room vibe is so much fun. Like everyone's cool. Everyone's there to support. And that's a thing of like independent wrestling fans at the moment now too. And the, the whole scene of it is so supportive. It's like, it's off putting to me at sometimes. Like I go to show and everyone's like, everyone backstage is like, no one's trying to bury each other. No one's trying yeah. to stab each other in the back to get ahead. Everyone's like, Oh, that was awesome, man. That was great. And then the crowd's like, that was great. Everyone loved everything. I'm like, what is this? Where am I? Where's all the negativity? (laughs) It's so much fun. It's just fun. And then that brings it out in the ring too, like having the freedom to go out there and try new things and um, be who I want to be is great, man. Like it's so freeing. That's my favorite thing about it, man. The freedom. Reminder, guys, L.A., New Japan on August 21st. Are you hoping to go back to Japan? I mean, uh, I, I think we've only seen you in New Japan, in Japan maybe once. I know you did Wrestle Kingdom. We did a Wrestle Kingdom match and then at Korokan a few okay. days before that. But we didn't wrestle. We just kind of did a run in and smash some fools to set up for the match. But, you know, if, if, if you've only done one, Wrestle Kingdom's not bad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, started at the top. Now it's just all the way down. No. Getting in there, having, <laughs> having to dodge Azuka's iron fingers. Is, yeah, like, man. Every time yeah. you look over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we worked a program with them in NOLA as well, and that was great fun. And those fingers are no joke. You're like, whatever. They get a big gimmick. Wham! <laughs> God damn it. Like, <laughs> real fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, hopefully back to Japan very soon. Hopefully. Interesting. Interesting. On I mean, a few things. Obviously, you guys uh, had, a, had a long history with Noah, and I don't know exactly mm-hmm. how that, that ended. I don't know if there was any bad blood or anything like that. No, but... nothing at all. No, I'd love to go back. I, I still consider them uh, friends and family to me. Um, one day, it ended. We, our contracts were running out. We, wanted, we had that chance to go be in America, so we went for it. You know what I mean? You just got to keep trying to improve and make more money. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, um, and then, yeah. How was, how was that transition for you? I mean, going from, from where you grew up and where you spent so much of your life to Japan, then mm-hmm. to America. I mean, that's – was there a constant culture shock for you or, or was the, the, the transition pretty seamless? Pretty seamless. I'm chill, man. Like, I'm cool. Sky's the sky wherever you go. Uh, when I, growing up as a kid, man, we moved a lot. I never lived – until I was – I think 16 or 17, I never lived in the same house for more than two years. So we moved and we moved towns and cities all the time. Yeah. Um, 
so then from there, like I would do interstate trips in Australia. Then I would do, uh, I was traveling to San Bernardino to SoCal back in 2008. And I'd just go every year. I'd come back and then we'd go to Cincinnati and then that's where, and then Missouri. And then we went to Japan and it was like, we went for like three months. So it is a little bit of a, it's not a culture shock. It's just a culture readjustment. I wasn't like, oh no, what am I doing? I just shut up, like listen to what other people are telling me to do and do it. Um, kind of be aware of where you are and what other people are doing and kind of just fit in is the best you can. Like, um, it's, it's like when you're first there, like after a while we get comfortable and became a bit rowdy and whatnot. But <laughs> again, you know, lately you learn the streets and what you can get away with and the fun you can have. But yeah, it's just, so that was always me and Mikey's philosophy on wrestling and wherever we'd go, we'd just shut up, see what was needed from us and do it and do it to the best of our ability and just keep showing that um, work effort and compatibility. Yeah. What were your feelings when he was like, eh, don't know if I want to be in NXT anymore? No, I was supportive of that. Like his family stuff had been like, he's had a family in Australia, man. Sure. And he was, he was a, a lot of the time he was miserable because he was away from them so much. And at the time too, in NXT, like we were just getting shit on. Like we knew like every idea we just get was getting shut down or we we're getting yelled at for not having ideas. And then we'd have ideas and they wouldn't do them. And then they'd be like, where's your ideas? I'm like, <laughs> said no to them. We had one day where we were working on a new entrance. They wanted a big fancy new entrance for us. And they were mad at us for not having better ideas. And I'm like, I don't know what these lights do. I don't know. I'm not a sound engineer. I'm not a light engineer. You tell me what we can do. So I'm pretty sure I almost got fired that day. Um, and we worked on this. I don't know. If, I can't remember when or what the match was, but there's this one entrance we do and we come from either side of the ring. And the lights, my idea was like the lights will come with us and then in the middle and then the logo will come there. Yeah. The next week, no, the next taping, since this was in the block, we're loaded on either side of the ring and I'm looking at Mike and I'm waiting for the lighting cue that we'd put all this effort into doing to hit and it just does our old entrance. And I look across the mic and I'm like, <laughs> mm, whatever. And then we just come out and do it anyway. So I'm just like, we got in so much trouble for not having bigger ideas. And oh. they, well, they forgot to use them the next time. I'm like, thanks man. So he was, he was pretty miserable at that point and just, he needed to change. He needed to go home and it worked out really good for him if yeah. the pandemic didn't hit because yeah he went straight from there then to new japan and went to the new japan cup had like great matches there and was set to do more pandemic hits and especially west australia shut down hard oh, like right. i've not i've not been home since bef- like 2019 oh wow i think that's the last time i've been home and i was meant to go uh earlier this year um and then right as we were getting ready to go the, they didn't reopen the borders so yeah i've still not been home in that time yeah i remember all my friends from that area they, they talked about how how much they shut down but it, i mean it mitigated an awful lot it wasn't they didn't get yeah, hit nearly definitely. nearly as hard either fortunately no i know people whinging about it back home and i'm like where do you need to go the fuck yeah. do you need to go mate <laughs> <laughs> just shut up so, shut up stay stay home enjoy the time off so Triple H was running NXT back then. He's got mm-hmm. the reins in WWE, and we've already seen categorical changes. Like not as many rematches. The promos sound more natural. A lot, mm-hmm. a lot of fresh and stuff. Do you think there that will be a consistent, like considerable change, or do you think eventually they'll kind of go back to what we know of Raw and SmackDown? I don't know. We'll see. Like I don't know if it's a like because Raw and SmackDown used to be different than when it started yes. to get multiple it's a burnout process you know what i mean like it depends how long they can keep it up for yeah. like because then like who says in a year or two that this we don't get sick of this formula <laughs> you know what i mean like it's too much change i can't yeah. keep up with it like, i don't know people are fickle as they say sure. so who knows uh, it's good though like i i hear good things i don't watch it but like i see things on the internet and it looks like good there's good buzz yeah. Um, people getting jobs back is good. Like, 
they, you see so much negativity, uh, but there's still people. Like we're performers, we're people, we're people, we're people, we're people. Um, you know, we we need a lot of these people have families to support, things like that. Like, so when you get to a certain age, you gotta make money to support yeah. your family, especially like I know a lot of thing wrestlers now have much longer careers, which is fantastic. But then there's more younger wrestlers coming in too. There's just so much. So when the opportunity is there to make a lot of money that can set you up for the rest of your life. You have to take it. Like people talk about like the slapjack thing and retribution and how stupid it was. It's like, well, that made me a lot of fucking money. And that's <laughs> like, like I can't, I'll never, if I could do it again, I'd do it again because it made me a lot of fucking money. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and I do want to talk about slapjack. I, I thought mm-hmm. that you could get it over as, I mean, I've seen you perform for a long time. I thought that mm-hmm. you could do it as like an endearing thing. Like it's, it's such a ridiculous thing that this performer can make it work. But, yeah. but I mean, I mean, it seemed like, I mean, I can tell you, I was on, <laughs> I was on the conference call when <laughs> Vince McMahon was asked by an investor, where are your new stars? Where are the ratings? And yeah. then the next day I was told we just had the craziest ass creative meeting. <laughs> I can imagine. You see. And yeah. then, then that started. At that point, had you heard anything about being involved in retribution? No, this is all new to me as well. Like I didn't yeah. know that kind of thing. But like we, we'd heard they needed to bring a bunch of people up to be. I don't know. Was this before they even did the attacking the PC was, and stuff? It was like or, a few days before. It was like I want to say three or okay. four days before when I heard about the meeting, and the day before that was the conference call. But um, yeah. I, I know that there were people that I had talked to near creative that hadn't heard really the scope of all of it until yeah. the day after that conference call. No, we like when we saw that original, the first one, because I don't think anyone really mm-hmm. knew about it. We were like, everyone was asking around, was who, who was that? Who was doing that? And no one knew. And it became very much a thing of, well, they're going to need people to do that. So a lot of us were like, we're like pitching to be in it. Like, well, let's. Yeah put us in it like that's cool like it's cool like a lot of stuff flipping cars throwing molds of cocktails and stuff i'm like that's pretty cool but beating people up backstage my, who wouldn't want to do that like, my no favorite was when they, they threw a cinder block through a window and then they threw another cinder block through the window <laughs> it, was already it just goes broken. and it just it just slides along the ground i'm like <laughs> i don't know <laughs> not to be mean of whoever they had they had a bunch of big strong wrestlers yes like, like floating around like we could i could have thrown a cinder block through a window like, the, i would I, love to have done that i remember the first day and listen i ain't making fun of the man's height but they had this very short fellow like waddling yep. towards the camera going like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you There's better watch of, out <laughs> He's bunch of ki- kids in their dad's clothes like you know when you see that like kids wearing their dad's suit yeah <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah it was and I thought that, you know, I was slowing it down. I was like, who do they have under there? Every time they did a backstage thing, we had people, like, analyzing it. And then yeah. I would hear later on, they're like, oh, they don't have any idea yet. They don't yeah. know. No, no, they don't. So eventually, I think it was like Dijak pitched it a lot of, like, us joining um, and being it. And because um, we were all just told we're getting called up and then doing nothing. We were just doing nothing there. So I was like, yeah, well, it's, this is a main focal thing. Let's get a part of it. And so when it was then a bunch of us up there, we were like, hell yeah. And we were like talking about the hoods and all this stuff. And we're like, cool, we're going to make it like this, maybe a cyberpunky kind of newer age um, kind of rebels kind of thing. So we're not like the shield or anything like that. Um, and we're like putting all these ideas together and, and then yeah, and then we get the masks and we're like, oh, this isn't what we thought <laughs> at all. <laughs> but, you know, we got, we got the mask, we put them on, we went and saw Vince and he loved them. He's like, I love them. Wow. I'm like, yes, sir, I love it too. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, whatever you say, man. One of the things I love about <laughs> DiJack, like that is the perfect like WWE name, all caps DiJack. Jack, and, yeah. And, and usually, what they do is they'll take one of your names away. They added like four syllables to his name. <laughs> well, that's like, the thing with Dominic Dijakovic, and I'm Kovic. like, he could have just been DiJack. Jack, yeah. <laughs> and that's that was another thing. Like we had um, Thorn, DiJack, and then. Uh, Brent, Brent, uh, 
Dio Mace. was the other one. Yeah. Mace. Yeah, so he was Dio at the time. So we had Dijak, Dio, and Thor, DDT, the oh. poison. That was a good thing. There, pitch that. <laughs> you're a mace. <laughs> you're a Tiva, and you're, you're a slapjack. <laughs> like, who, so who tells you the names? Was it Vince? No, it was uh, Richard. Okay. Yeah. Like, so, and it was like half an hour before we had to like go back out and get like we had to get in shit. They were like, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. They uh, like, did you ever play Streets of Rage when you were younger, like on Sega Genesis? Yeah. They yeah. sounded like names that, you, that yeah. the guys that you would fight on there would have. Yeah, like it's a little slapjack. I'm like, I knew what a slapjack was, yeah. but I asked him, and it's like it's a badass weapon. I'm like, it's not really that badass. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty dated. <laughs> Stevie Ray had one in WCW. Yeah, though. yeah. I was like, and then we were like, we all kind of got like, I bought a slapjack, and Mace got like a a mace thing, and uh, Dijak bought like a. Crowbar, I'm like, yeah, what if we come out with these things? And they're like, nah. I'm like, okay. And it was the whole <laughs> thing was based on the destruction. <laughs> yeah. I, know, just, I think it just, as soon as like we moved to the Thunderdome and they started getting the big names back, Retribution just got pushed to the side, which makes sense. I'm like, whatever, man. Like, you got all your superstars back. Yeah. Cool. Had you heard that Fox wasn't necessarily comfortable with this? Because that's something that I had heard pretty early on. That Fox yeah. was like, ah, we don't know if we want this. We hear rumors like that, but like, I'm like, that's that's above my pay grade, man. You know <laughs> if that's true or not, but I'm like, sounds right. And that's, I think, maybe why they shifted to more of a less of a mob. Yeah. And it's also we couldn't have extras because of COVID testing and whatnot, so we lost all our uh, putty patrol, as we called them. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that Your that didn't soldiers. help. Yeah. So that didn't help. But then, like, yeah, I think the shift from being, like, more realistic to being more monsterish and fancy school. And I'm like, well, let's fully lean into that then. Like, let's go all the way with that. And then it just hovered and fizzled out. <laughs> and the thing was, there was incredible interest in Retribution. Like, one of the things that our site does, we pay a lot of attention to the YouTube views because yeah. it will show you what's going, what people are going out of their way to watch. Yep. And before even like everybody was kind of revealed like the mm -hmm. uh, the braun Strowman thing did like 30 yep. plus million and then the, yeah, the, the debut on smackdown four million attacking andrade mm -hmm. and zelina did good and then like beating up drew and, and keith did great like yeah I, I, every week it was unreal and then yep. when you all got in the ring it was still doing good stuff yeah, like good her stuff, business yeah. was and then mm -hmm. Mustafa Ali being revealed was so there was yeah. an incredible amount of interest in this. Why, like I'm I'm shocked that they would look at something that is an objective success from that metric, and be like, yeah, hey, let's de-emphasize it. I don't I don't know. Maybe later, like I don't think Vince is on YouTube. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if he's scrolling Twitter. <laughs> I like I mean? to imagine that Vince is like, I gotta watch Botcha Mania. I, I yeah, gotta watch the new one. He, he's vanity searching. Every yeah, day. He is. that's what he's doing. He's going yeah. to like wrestle talk and watching yeah. watches the, the yeah. British fellas talk in front of their green screen. That's, that's what I, they that's what he's doing with his free time now. Time right now, like what was the the Peacock deal was like for what ten billion or a billion yeah. or something? I'm like, he don't give a shit. No, <laughs> like what does he care like anymore? He don't care what you think. <laughs> Do Which you, is pretty clear. He doesn't care what we think. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a He's a good guy. Do you have a favorite moment of retribution? Like one that you look on fondly? Uh, I, I think I just... I don't know how comically bad things would like. We'd just keep pitching and then they'd come back with something completely from... They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, all right, here's something completely different. Uh for me personally, I think I've told this story before about when we where we would do our promos, our backstage things was the same area. And there'd always be one building security guard there um, off to the side. That was his door. And I got there early to the area early one time um, just to kind of lay out what I was going to do. And he like comes over to me. He's like, hey, man, don't want to interrupt you, but like, I just wanted to tell you, man, I love, this is so cool, man. I love Slapshot. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> oh, actually, the name's Slapjack. And he goes, 
and just goes back to his door and just stands oh. there like we never like it completely ignores him. Like, I thought that was so good. I'm like, slab slab shot would have made sense. It would have. <laughs> like, it would have. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that would have been cool. So as we as we wrap up the slapjack talk, I had heard yeah. last year that like you were constantly moved internally, like they have the internal rosters. It'd be yeah. Like Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown. What was yeah. going on there? Do you do you even remember? Yeah, I just you'd hear one thing about me and Mia we're gonna get separated. So when we did the breakup after we turned on Ali, uh, Vince had a chat to us all on the way to Gorilla about uh, putting the big boys together as a tag team, uh, taking the masks off of me and Mia, and us going back to ourselves and yeah. uh, Mia going to the women's division. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's a big revelation. Okay. Like, um, <laughs> and then we'd heard rumors of us going to SmackDown and then we were still on Raw for a while. And then I, it just, nothing really happens until travel tells you what you're doing. Yeah. I, I swear the WWE travel ladies, they're the shadow bookers because they know everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're the ones who know. Like, yeah, I mean, I I, yeah. That's that's how I've often like when Goldberg's coming back. It usually yeah. comes from the travel department, a, like stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, so they're like this yeah, guy man. ain't usually here. Yeah. <laughs> <up>? yeah. <laughs> oh my my dates have changed to a yes. Friday. You know, like am I on SmackDown now? And they're like, that's what I heard. Yeah. And then I'd go to like Don Cohn or whoever was in charge at that point. And I'm like, am I? A... And they're like, uh, Maybe. And then they go to creative and ask them. I'm like, nobody, how, how does anybody know? Well, the reason they didn't know is because they weren't going to use me. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> That's why no one knew. So when the release call comes, how are you feeling at that point? Are you bummed out? Are you like kind of relieved? Are you, are you like, let's, let's get back to work? How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty relieved. Like, um, uh, it's, it's like, you think like, oh, it's coming. Like, I, I yeah. thought it was coming for like, three years. I was on everybody's uh, future endeavor wish list. Every single time there was releases, I'd like you'd see, and people were like, "Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure Shane Thorne got released too." Which I I'm think like, is terrible. I think that's the most dog yeah, shit thing to do. Big, like yeah. fantasy booking people losing their jobs. It's so stupid. Job. I know, it's so cool. Like I did the same thing when I was younger. So whatever, what goes around comes around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, like, uh, yeah, I got the call, and uh, it was Laurenitis, and I, I have a pretty good. Uh, relationship with him too. I think he's a big reason of why I was there longer than what I should have been. <laughs> like, I'm sure I was on the cutting block many a times. Um, so yeah, I just said thanks for everything, guys. Like, and he's no bridges burned, nothing like that. Um, and yeah, I was looking forward to what came next. The world was starting to open back up again, man. And yeah. like, I, I was pretty miserable there. The like just idea after idea getting shut down for no reason like the like the australia gimmick that i had i'm like how does it translate to the ring i'm like who cares i get i get in the ring and someone fucking hits their finish on me and pins me who cares the, the look it's marketable and they're like yeah we need to work tweak the colors i'm like all right i'm never getting out of this um but i just tried to enjoy it. like while i was doing that like I, it was months i just wanted to enjoy my time there so um I just hung out backstage and like we had rings backstage. So I just trained with anyone who wanted to warm up. I just trained with anyone backstage. Uh, I'd go see the writers, see how everyone was doing, just hang out and get to talk to everyone. Um, have a little bit of, enjoy some pie in catering. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I had tried not to stay there too long in catering, but cause you kind of get stuck there. When you, you get in there, you kind of get stuck there. So it's good to just, be out in the ring, be seen, roll around. I remember Molly Holly um, telling me stories of that oh, wonderful, she's wonderful lady. She's so great. Of when she, and she's so humble too. She's like saying like when she was in WCW, she would just before the shows wrestle herself in the ring until someone noticed and went, oh, she can bump and yeah. do moves and stuff. All right, well, let's put her out there. So I'm like, it's the best place. They got cameras on you. I don't like, they probably don't record everything that goes on pre-show, but there were some pretty funny moments. I remember me and Nikki, Nikki Cross or Nikki Ash would wrestle all the time. And there's one part where she's like, shoot to the corner. 
up and over. And what I heard was low drop kick. But what she had said was two drop kick. <laughs> but I heard low drop kick. Uh, no, what I heard was two drop kicks. Two drop kick. But she'd said low drop kick. So I up and over. I swing a line. She hits the rope. I turn around. I feed my chest. And she goes drop kick straight to my groin. Hard drop kick, two feet right into the coin and just drops me right in the center ring while everyone's kind of stretching and warming up. So a lot of good moments like that, me getting beat up or goofing around. <laughs> but I mean, now things are working out great. You got New Japan, yeah, man. as we mentioned, Dude. August 21st. Big tag yes. team match there. You're working Dude. with Christopher Daniels, man. Yeah, man. Like, again, and then what even more I'm excited about is... Tito coming back from his first yeah. tour in Japan, uh, he's going to be brimming with confidence and uh, like new ability. So I think it's going to be something to, he's kind of like the sleeper guy. And I think this is definitely going to be now that he's done his first tour, when he comes back to strong now, you're going to see a different, like more confident, badass, bad dude Tito. So it changes a, people. I, it looks like it yeah, changes man. people. I'm going to let him show what he's learned and the skills that he's got from over there. And then I'm going to punch you. You're in the face. Little <laughs> smug, beautiful head, pretty boy. Who are you? Who else are you looking to lock it up with in, uh, in new Japan, whether it be strong or over in Japan? I like uh, with strong. It's definitely like uh, the young boys that they have, the young talent like they're So they just remind me of me. <laughs> like They're so, they're so innovative and hungry and skillful. And like, it just, it, it brings it out of you. Like when you're with people who uh, have that ambition, I'm like, it, you get caught up in it. And those, all those boys have that. Like Rand and uh, Kev, um, Alex, uh, to wrestle around with him. All those guys are really cool. And then, uh, then I want to get in there with Okada, Tanahashi. Oh, yeah. Uh, I really, and even like, Kojima, I wrestled Kojima a few times back in Noah, and uh, that was a lot of fun. So I'd like to get back in there with him. Um, who else we got? Kenta, I wouldn't mind having some more rematches with Kenta. I mean, against him or with him, you never know. Yeah. So there's a lot. It's just so many new people that I've never worked with, and then uh, I'm really jonesing to get back to Japan and wrestle in front of that crowd and that style again. I figure that's like, I feel, feel like that's where I'll get my full mojo back. You also worked uh, a PWG recently. Now, I mean, I, categorically yeah. different than what PWG was before when they were uh, in a smaller venue. <laughs> Definitely a more yeah. hot, uh, I don't want to say yeah. physically hot venue, hot uh, venue. As, yeah. as opposed to the crowd. Uh, how yeah. was that for you? Uh, it was fun to come back, man. And like, I, I'm I'm the opener, man. I'm the opener, and uh, so I get the crowd hot and fresh. And then I'm working with these, like I worked with Jack Cartwheel and then Titus Alexander. These um, Cartwheel had been there before, and he had so many ideas. Like, and I was like, "Yep, let's do them all." Because like I'd been in like in WWE, like yeah. you can go all out sometimes, but a lot of times you're being very conservative because you don't have much time. So. I was just like, do it. Let's do everything. Everything you got, man. <laughs> Fucking let's do it all. Um, and I then Titus it. was, it was Titus's first time. And like I'd, I'd watched beforehand, I did my research and I looked him up. And uh, when I finally met him, he was just respectful, absolute great guy. And he was like, whatever you want. And I'm like, no, nah, man, this is your debut. I'm already here. Um, let's can show you off, man. Let's display you. And he was like, humble great guy easy so easy to work with and yeah like the crowds are so cool there man they love it like they're just there for a good time that's what i that's all i want to do i'm fucking wrestling for a good time now so i man i i hate to put this news out live on the air but we're getting news of nxt uk cuts like as we are on the air like wild boar flash morgan webster i hear mark andrews so, oh I mean, man you you have a successful track record following wdb what would what kind of advice would you provide these people that are maybe younger in their career and th they don't know what to think or feel. Uh, that's crazy. Cause I just heard like, it, isn't they doing 
They're doing yeah. NXT, NXT Europe. U- Europe. Yeah. And then, like, so they've made it a bigger market. Global and now delocalization. <laughs> yeah, and then making it smaller. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I honestly, I don't follow too much of it. I know these guys, and I know they're, like, especially Flash and Andrews. Like, as you were saying their names then, I'm like, ooh, they're I, free. I, I, I heard can... Flash signed a new deal, like, a few months ago. Yeah, I uh, I was just deal. about to report the, it, like this weekend, that I heard he started a new The deal. contracts mean don't mean a lot. <laughs> so, but I'm just like, you know, I, I, I hope there's so much work in the UK now again that they're just going to be able to be, like, you know, everyone loves a return. And so they're going to get their return with, like, all the freedom in the world. Man, I'd love to work them again. I love Andrews and Flash, man. Yeah. They're so cool. They're such cool dudes. I, I guarantee once their downtime is done, you're going to see them even more. Because they weren't focused. Like, NXT UK weren't really using them that much. Yeah. They didn't spotlight a lot of people. They're going to get themselves back into the spotlight because they're too good to not. And they're such good people that people will want them on their show. So I, I, I think you'll see them back in America. Uh, fuck yeah. Bring it on. Me and Mark Andrews, come come He's fight so me. At, at, come fight me in strong, man. Come on, let's do it. I, I think it. I think I'm sure if me and Mikey maybe worked. I, no, it wasn't against him and Flash. It was just him and someone else once. But I wanna I want TMDK versus Andrews and Flash. So I would imagine um, you're you're uh, looking to do more stuff with TMDK, obviously. That's oh, definitely, man. Like, well, throwing on always. the shirt. I mean, we, we yeah. talked about Mikey earlier, Bronson mm-hmm. or uh, Jonah. Yeah, man. It's just like it's a it's a revamp of it, which is funny now because like I had people are like, oh, this new team. I'm like, no, man. We've been around since 2009. Like it was the first time Mikey and I started that. And then there's so many of the boys who, while we were in WWE. They were holding the name down strong. Marcus Pitt and Damian Slater, uh, TMDK Untouchables. Like, if you go YouTube that, man, you're going to see some fucking insane matches from Perth. Um, and they, and they, these guys are so, so fucking good. And they've just been stuck in Perth because of the lockdowns. Um, a lot of them have families now and uh, they have respons- like real world responsibilities. <laughs> Um, of mortgages and babies and things like that. But my goal now is to get TMDK. I, I just want all of us to have a taste of Japan. Yeah. I want those boys to be able to go to a Tokyo Dome show. Just do one tour. Just do one tour. I'm is sure it, the wives will let them. Is a part of you just waiting for Triple H to make that call to, to Jonah? I mean, it's probably coming. Like, he's he was one of his dudes. Yeah, yeah. If he, if that happens, man, that's great for him. Because like I said, like that money, the money, and he never got a he never got a chance. Like he did, uh, or never got a chance on the main roster. Yeah, motherfucker got plenty like, of chance. I, sh- I was shocked that they got looks at him. And they didn't bring him up. Yeah, he did great all those times too. He did great, and then nothing. Um, so for him to get a proper chance on the main roster, and then a proper go with that main roster money, because like he's him and his wife. And lovely people, yeah. and they deserve to have a good life. Yeah. Um, not to say that he's not going to have a good life in New Japan as well. I think he's killing it there, and they're using him amazingly. So I think whatever happens in the future, whether it's that call from Hunter or not, we're going to have a real good time. I'm not expecting a call, so that's cool. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I home. mean... Uh, and feel free to pl- tell me to go play in traffic, but like, are you signed? Are you a free agent technically? Like, how is how is free that agent? Right now? Okay, a free agent. Yeah, yeah, free agent. Now yeah, just doing show by show things. I'm only contracted to my fiance. That's it. Uh-huh. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever happens, happens. But like, I don't. That's the thing. Like, man, I don't want to. And it was a, a talk we'd had when we first joined NXT and WWE and bringing. The team became named there, and we didn't want to do it. We did like, we've got other guys in Japan, Hartley Jackson. Yeah. Um, we've got other guys all around uh, Australia with Slex, and he's doing Noah stuff too. So I like, and the, that was the point of the team DK name was to 
kind of have that independence and to go forth and do what you can do. Um, and so if WWE owned that, then it would, I think it would ruin the legacy that we have with that. If that makes any sense. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I mean, you, you have to be protective of it. I mean, I've heard that from a, an awful yeah. lot of people that they would rather yeah. protect something that, that is near and dear to their heart than have it portrayed in the way that they yeah. don't see fit. Yeah. That's it, man. Well, August 21st, New Japan, Los Angeles. Shane, I want to thank you so much. I've wanted to, to speak with you for a while, and I appreciate you being yeah. so generous with your time. Definitely, man. And, like, you know, T-Bars, new leader of Hit Row. What? I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, no, I'm that's not, that's the repackage. That's the repackage. That don't, don't spread that onto the dirt sheet. That's the don't headline. That. That's the headline now. <laughs> Shane Haste, T-Bar will now lead Hit Row. <laughs> T-Bars, T-Bars. Yes, T-Bars. He drops the bars. He drops I the bars. It. I love it. Uh, <laughs> check him out. New Japan Strong yes. this weekend. TMBK rematching. Well, sort of rematching. Different lineup, but against <laughs> Yuya, that scumbag, that scoundrel, that no good, scruffy, nerf hurting, some of a bitch, Yuya, and that delightful man. Christopher Daniels. Christopher, he is wonderful. He's really great. Yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing against him. He's a great that, talent. That, that son of a bitch, you, yeah. Guys, until next time, we're out.